My name is Brian Burns. I grew up in the northwest suburbs of Chicago. I found some literature from an organization that said that they had taken some trips there and some medical teams there. Called them up and I said, I don't have any special skills. I'm not a doctor. I, I'm not trained to do anything yet. I'm just starting college and um, can you use me in any way? And before I knew it, I was in a, a refugee camp. You say we remember, tell me how You say never again, do you mean it now? Get off your knees and breathe the air and I just sat there on the concrete floor next to her and tried to make her feel comfortable and she didn't have any energy and, and she couldn't really move too much on her own and she, she couldn't communicate with only tend to your own she could only barely communicate mother. with her mother and she couldn't communicate with me. I stayed with her through the night and her mother kept trying to take the IV out and end her suffering and I kept putting the IV back in um, and then she died and we left about an hour later. So I saw the headline, I went into the article and um, there were pictures in the article about, you know, people who were killed. And there was one picture in particular of a baby face down in the sand. And I can, I can remember that this baby had these little tennis shoes on. And I, it was obvious that this baby was well-loved and cared for, except that it was dead. And... That was very upsetting. It's unimaginable, actually, that something like that happens. And it was happening every day, and this was a common occurrence, and I just thought I didn't know what to do. So I was just kind of sitting there crying, you know, at my desk. To believe in miracles and faith. Some countries now in Africa, they don't have these. Uh, problem of water, but in southern Sudan is terrible. And that's uh, why I'm doing uh, this kind of uh, bringing water there. And seeing that little boy just going putting his mouth on the, on the uh, water pump drinking, I was just happy. As be being a pediatrician, wanted to document what their life was the life of a child so that they would just give me the drawing paper and said draw whatever you want if you have to look at the pictures you see villages being bombed villages on fire uh, people being shot uh, you see the Janjaweed on a camel you could learn that this is what these children have been exposed to and this is what they're growing up with and this is what's going to impact on their life if I close my eyes, can you still see me? Again we all scatter at night, the daylight hope to me. All the prayers I do Maybe we Give me credit Like it says in the Talmud, who saves a life saves the world. Do you ever hear that? Then I'll draw you pictures. Maybe that's what it's all about. Where nobody is there. January 10th, 1962. We knew there was something wrong, but we did not know exactly what. <laughs> the doctor said, forget Rick. Put him away, put him in an institution. He's gonna be nothing but a vegetable for the rest of his life. We 
tried a little bit. We talked, and then we said, no, we're not going to put Rick away. We're going to bring Rick home and bring him up like any other child. We knew Rick was smart. We could tell by looking in his eyes. And when we talked to him, we, you know, he was paying attention to what we were saying. So we wanted to get a computer built so Rick could communicate with us. Everybody came to our house that night for Rick to say his first words. And everybody was betting, you know, what is the first words Rick is ever going to say? His mom saying, it's going to be, hi, mom. And me, the dad, saying, oh, it's going to be, hi, dad. Well, the Boston Bruins were going for the Stanley Cup. And the very first words Rick ever said was, go Bruins. Dick is a military man, so he knows a thing or two about commitment. This time, he's just months removed from a heart attack. This gift that he gives to his son, or is it the other way around? Either way, it all started when Rick heard about a charity run for a paralyzed athlete. He asked Dad, and Dad said yes. The gun went off, and we went off with all the other runners, and everybody thought that Rick and I would just go to the corner and turn around and come back. Well, we didn't. We finished the whole five miles coming in next to last, but not last. And when we got home that night, Rick wrote on his computer, Dad, when I'm running, it feels like my disability disappears. So that was a very powerful message to me that we finally found a sport that Rick could get involved in just like everybody else. Rick is my motivator, he inspires me. To me, he's the one out there competing and I'm just loaning him my arms and my legs so that he can compete. There's just something that gets into me when I'm out there competing with Rick that I can't explain it and we're able to go faster. And it, it's just an unbelievable feeling. Rick and I, love the Ironman triathlon to be out there competing with the best triathletes in the world to be accepted to compete along with these triathletes just to be out there on that pier with all the other triathletes and then waiting in the water for that cannon to go off it, it was just so exciting See, the feeling coming down the finish line at a leaky drive it, it's just an awesome experience with the crowd there, all the excitement, the noise, and the announcers announcing all that, your adrenaline just gets flowing. I may be disabled, but I live a very fulfilling life. And if someone takes the time to get to know me, they will realize that I am no different than anyone else. Here he is, he graduated from public high school. He's graduated from college. He's out there competing in road races and triathlons. He lives a happier life probably than 95% of the population. Rick would tell you that, uh, you know, if he, if he was physically able to do something that he'd probably play basketball or football or hockey. But then he always says, no, the first thing he'd do is sit down and have me sit down in his wheelchair and he'd push me. You know, it really makes me feel good that, uh, that you know, he appreciates, you know, what I'm trying to do to help him out and he'd do the same thing for me. Our message is, yes, you can. You can do anything you want to do as long as you make up your mind. You can do it.